Well, you've all been waiting for it. First quarter 2025 results for NVIDIA. Yeah, I said first quarter 2025. It's like we're in the future. It's just a fiscal first quarter. But looking at these results and hearing about this business, this is as close to the future as we've ever been. I'm Corey Johnson, Futurum's chief market strategist. Been looking at technology for a long time. No company has ever, ever put up a quarter like this. Stock market kind of likes it. It's up a little bit. But let's dig into the business story behind this stock on the move. Again, first quarter results. Wall Street likes a beat or a miss, and this was a beat a little bit. Uh, the guidance also a little bit better. But let's look at what the business actually did in the quarter. Quarterly revenues of $26 billion. That's up 262% uh, from the previous year. Data center revenues. Remember, only a few years ago, this is a, this is a business where the main business was selling chips into P PC video game players. Well, now it's data centers, uh, computers, if you if you will, that don't even have uh, monitors, let alone individuals to run them, run for so many individuals. Well, data centers, $222.6 billion in revenues of 427%. In the same time last year, when it was pretty good, and the company announcing a 10 for one stock split effective June 7. So for every shareholder on June 6, they'll get nine more shares at one-tenth the value the next day. Let's look deeper uh, into the numbers. Uh, as I mentioned, 262% revenue growth, really an explosion of growth, kind of coinciding with the release of chat GPT um, and uh, the NVIDIA chips that uh, ran that incredible device and that real, the AI moment I think we'll look back on forever is when AI became a consumer device and NVIDIA really the beneficiary here. Now, unheard of profitability for the semiconductor business. 65% operating margins for these guys. Just absolutely fantastic. Um, and, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as how it compares to the rest of the industry. But I mentioned also the gaming business. That was 45% of their business in January, 2022. Now it's only 10% of their business. And you can look at it, when you look at the different business units of gaming, professional visualization, data center, auto and, and OEMs, OEMs, non-existent business at this point in time. But data center has just taken over this business at NVIDIA. How do the stock react? The stock seems to always react when NVIDIA talks. It was up, but not a crazy amount of 5% in after hours trading, but that's after a better than 200% return over the last year. Now on the conference call, uh, Jensen Wong, the, the CEO and founder, co-founder, was asked about the demand, how real the demand is. Uh, the customers of semiconductor companies lie. I've been saying that for years. I'm saying it right now. The worry is they're over-ordering right now because they can't get the chips they want. And once supply is robust, are they going to back away? So Jensen was asked, uh, I, like as if we're on a first name basis, but he was in fact asked, uh, how is the business doing? What is the demand really there? Or are customers willing to stockpile chips for fear they can't get any more later? And maybe there could be some inventory growing in the channel. Uh, are we going to see AI used like we imagine it could be used? And he sounded pretty excited. The demand, I think, is is um, uh, really, really high, and it outstrips our supply. Uh, longer term, uh, that's what that's you know, that's the reason why I jumped into to make a few comments. Long longer term, uh, you know, we're, we're completely redesigning how computers work. And it's, this is, this is a platform shift. Of course, it's been compared to uh, other platform shifts in the past, but, but, um, uh, time will, will clearly tell that, that this is much, much more profound than previous platform shifts. And the reason for that is because the computer is no longer an instruction driven only computer. It's an intention understanding computer. And it understands, it understands, of course, the way we interact with it, but it also understands our meaning, what we intend that we asked it to do, and it has the ability to reason, uh, inference iteratively to, to process a plan and uh, uh, come back with a solution. And so, so every aspect of the computer is changing in such a way that instead of retrieving pre-recorded files, it is now generating contextually relevant, intelligent um, answers. 
And so that that's going to change computing stacks um, all, all over the world. And you saw a build uh, that, in fact, even the PC computing stack is going to get revolutionized. And uh, this is just the beginning uh, of all the things that, you know, what people see today are the beginning of the things that we're working in our labs and, and the things that we're doing with all the startups and large companies and um, developers all over the world. It's going to be it's going to be quite, quite extraordinary. So in extraordinary indeed was this quarter. And I also, again, want to point out the gross margin story here. I mean, or the operating margin story. Uh, when companies do well, it's not always, they're not always able to raise their prices and keep their expenses down. NVIDIA has done this like no other semiconductor company of size that we've ever seen. In fact, it's rare of any company to do this at this scale. With these 65% operating margins, compare that to Intel, a company that's been selling semiconductors for a very long time and has you know, at one point in time had margins better than NVIDIA, but certainly in line with NVIDIA. In fact, only a few years ago, these companies had similar operating margins. Intel's now at negative 8% while uh, selling chips for uh, less than it costs them to run their business. And yet uh, NVIDIA putting up 65% operating margins, just fantastic. But I got one number, it's maybe even more important, the one number that's gonna tell you a whole lot and a summary of NVIDIA earnings right after this. The Drill Down is brought to you by Futurum Group, where analysts, researchers, advisors, content creators, and marketing experts help business leaders anticipate and understand shifts in their industries and build strategies to leverage disruptive innovation. With deep analysis, Futurum Group's extensive industry experience delivers reliable research and data, thought leadership, and actionable advice to help you with your strategy and go-to-market efforts. Futurum Group. So here's everything you need to know about the first quarter 2025 results from NVIDIA. Fiscal first quarter results, obviously, it's 2024 still, but these results really show us the future. They show us the investment in these semiconductors, $26 billion in the quarter, up 262% for the previous year. And a stock split announced 10 for one, but that's not the bite, that's not the number that tells us a whole lot. What's really interesting here is how this business is different than all the other semiconductor businesses. In April of 2022, only two years ago, Intel and Nvidia and a lot of other big semiconductor companies looked a lot alike with about 20% operating margins when things were going well. Well, here we are now. Nvidia had 65% operating margins. Compare that to Intel, negative eight. 65% operating margins, absolutely fantastic. All right, check me out on X at Corey TV. Futurum Group's webpage uh, on YouTube has some fantastic stuff about technology and about NVIDIA. Drilled on earnings, part of 6.5 Media.